All right, guys, in the last tutorial, what we did was we pretty much queried the database and we asked it to return a result set of all the days where the stock price went down. And I'm losing my voice. Great timing for that. So let me go ahead and now the first thing we want to do is loop through each of these results row by row. So the easiest way in my mind to do that is just make a variable called row and set this equal to my SQL underscore fetch forgot how to type array now as a excuse me as a parameter for this you just pass it in the result set and what this is going to do is it's going to return an associative array now remember associative array is basically an array that uses words instead of numbers to represent the data in it so this is basically going to loop through your result set and it's going to give you an associative array on each different loop so the first time it's going to give you an array based on the first row the second time the second row third time third row so on and so forth so basically the row is the associative array so let's go ahead and start pulling data from each row now remember what we did is we selected the date in the percent change basically from the result set so that's what we have to work with right now so let's go ahead and make a variable called date and in order like I said to grab information from an associative array you type in the name of the array which is in this case row and you type in the piece of data now it returns to you an array and its uh, key is the name of the column so the name of my column in the table is date so there you go now we have that rows date stored in the variable date so whatever date it went down it's now stored in the variable date easy enough and let's do the same thing with percent change because remember those were the two pieces of data that we queried from the database and I'm actually just gonna go ahead and cheat a lot here percent change percent change so now the date and the percent change we have stored in variables that we can more easily work with now remember I said this I think in the last tutorial these are the dates that the stock price went down but what we are more interested in is the following day so we are interested in this date we're interested in the day after so what we want to do is we want to make another query to basically select the information for the next day so in order to do that let's go ahead and use our old friend SQL2 remember I don't like to name my variables the same thing so I'm just gonna go ahead and name this SQL2 and it's pretty much gonna be a query just like before just a simple string so what this is gonna do is it's gonna select this is gonna look very familiar select date and percent change from I probably just could have copied that whole thing from company ticker because remember we're in the same loop we're not the company ticker is gonna remain the same one so if this was Yahoo up here then this is still gonna be Yahoo down there so what we're doing is we're selecting the date and the percent change from the company we're working with where date is greater than date and I actually want to move this so it's a little bit cleaner and I'll show you guys what I'm doing in just a second and I want to order by date a s c in a limit of one now we're saying okay what the heck is this query and why the heck are you doing a where in an order by clause well first of all I want to say this remember we have a date now these are the dates where the stock dropped in price and our goal is to get the next or excuse me the following days data so we want to get the date and percentage change from the following day so why did I do where great is greater than date well the date right here is the current day so if the date is greater than this then it would mean where date is after so basically if today if I did this today in other words if this variable meant today if date was greater than today then that would be basically all the future so if I order by date then it's gonna set it up in 
the order that we want in the limit one is only going to give me one day. So basically the next day, that's what we do whenever we say limit one, after this date right here. Make sense? Easy enough. That's as best I can explain it anyways. So now what we want to do after that is just go ahead and run this query and we do that by just hitting this. And I'm just going to go ahead and move things around so you guys can see a little bit better. Result equals, and I actually want to change that to 2. Result 2 equals MySQL 2. And what could I do after this? Okay, I might as well do this. So basically what we did is we basically limited this to 1. And this would mean I don't want all the dates after the date. I only want the next day. I only want the following day. So we what we want to do was we want to ensure that it only returned one result. Now there are going to be instances where it returns 0. For example, remember, if we look at the last month of data, then all of those days are going to have following days. But what if the stock price went down today? Well, tomorrow we don't know what it's going to be yet, so we don't have that information. So even though this query in this program might be running properly, it may return to you um, no result set because tomorrow doesn't exist yet. So what we want to do is we want to check how many rows that it return. So hopefully we get one, but we may get zero if tomorrow did exist yet. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make a variable called number of rows. And in order to count the number of rows in your result set, you use a function called my SQL num rows. And as a parameter, you just pass in your result set, which is result two. And this is either going to return one or zero. And we'll go ahead and we'll make another clause. Like if it returns five or something, we'll just say we have an error. So let me just go ahead and make sure you're Okay, I'm probably not going to have time to do this in this tutorial, but in the next tutorial, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working inside this, and we're going to check, okay, if you return one row, that means that we do have data that we can work with. If you return zero rows, then don't do anything because that means you're on the current day and there's no data for tomorrow yet. And we'll make another else clause that say, okay, if you return anything else but one and zero, then something went wrong and, you know, we'll just put an error to the user or something. So that's what we have to look forward to. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.